Let's continue our coverage of the top 15 prospects at the 2022 NHL Draft. And in this one, we're doing Joachim Kemmel. Now, I'm doing this video a little differently. I'm still going to go over the basic information about uh, what we know about him, the type of player he is, and so on. But I've also enlisted the help from someone in Finland to talk me through the season he's having and the kind of player he is. Let's just start with what we know on a basic level. Joachim Kemmel, 17 years old, won't turn 18 until the end of April. He's a right wing player. He's a right shot forward. 5'11", not really tall. 176, not very big. Uh, not tiny, but definitely undersized when it comes to the NHL. Well, on the season, he's got 15 goals, 8 assists in 38 games. So 23 points over 38 games. Not really anything crazy to write home about. He is, though, still 17 years old. He's playing in a men's league at 17 years old and still putting up 15 goals. On what is not a very good team, right? Yip is not a great team. And we'll get to it a little bit later when I, I bring on my guest here. Uh, but they're not a great team. 15 goals, 23 points is okay. He's got another 6 points in all U18 competitions in 5 games. And 2 points in 3 games at the U20 competition. That's good. When it comes to the U20 level, he is one of Finland's top players. Without a doubt. Last year, if you, you return or rewind a year, in 38 games at the U20 level, 22 goals, 36 points. That's more like it. And consider that's a 16-year-old season, right? He doesn't turn 17 that year until April, when the season is basically done. And he adds another goal at the legal level in one game. Great stuff. Um, now, I don't think that he's going to still be the number two when it comes to the draft. Now, I, I built my top 15 based off of midseason draft rankings from a, very, a number of sources. And uh, number two, I don't think is in the cards anymore. Specifically because Joachim Kemmel goes through like a three-month stretch without recording a single point. You'll see here from the beginning of, no of December all the way till March 2nd, he doesn't score a point. Not one, not an assist, not a goal, nothing. Uh, there is a, a portion there where he's missing. If you, you, you focus in on the January portion, there's only two games that he played, the 29th and 31st. He was out with injury, and it took him a while to get back to where he used to be. And, and that's specifically at the end of the month. Where in the final couple of games of the year, he starts putting on more production, right? He's got five points near the tail end of the season in only a handful of games. So better look there from Joachim Kemmel. But I still don't think that means he's going to finish number two overall. Now, my guest today is my friend Tia Honkama. She writes for the hockey site uh, Yatkoika, I think I pronounced that correctly, out in Finland, watches a ton of Liga games. She's going to help me chat through, or we're both going to chat about Joachim Kemmel to kind of get a sense of what he is, what happened this year, and so on and so forth. So here's the chat between Tia and I. Tia, thanks for joining me to talk about, I'm going to ask you first, how do you pronounce his name? Because if I do it wrong, you're going to correct me, so I'm going to get ahead of it. <laughs> How do you pronounce his name? Joachim Kemel. There we go. Joachim <laughs> Kemel. I'm not going to be able to do it the same way and sound um, authoritative. It's just going to sound shitty if I do it. So I'm not going to do it. Um, let, let's talk about Joachim a bit because in my draft rankings, I have him going number two. And, and that's because I put a bunch of other drafts together and figured out he might be number two. That might yeah. not be the case going forward, but... I would, let's just talk about like an overall thing about like what type of player is he? What have you noticed watching him when, when you watch? Because you watch a ton of Liga games. What have you seen from him playing for Yip? Well, actually, I haven't seen that many games from him. But like from what I've seen and what I've been told by others and read about him, it's that he's a very, uh, like he's the smallest winger who has a really great shot. Like that's the thing. And like beginning of the season, he was, uh, he was said, there was a lot of things being said that he was like always in the right place. But right now, because he hasn't made that many points, he's not uh, that, it's, it's more like he, he's making more mistakes at the moment. Right. Is it <laughs> so just kind of harder because it's, it's kind of men, right? He's, he's what, 17, going to be 18 in April, I think. Right. So P.S. Like, yeah. it's incredible that we're matching. It's insane. Like, you think that we planned it, but we're really not. It's, it's kind of 
I can't get over it right now. Um, but yeah, he's only 17 years old playing against men, right? And we didn't expect a yeah. whole lot from even Aturatu. Um, and now we're seeing, you know, Joachim Kemmel, who's 17 years old, going on 18, not having a great second half. Is that because he's playing against like 30 year old men type of thing? Um, I'm not entirely sure because um, he was always doing really great until he got injured. Like he um, he injured his shoulder apparently, and after that he missed a month. And after that he's been well. He hasn't made any points since then. Or actually, he, he scored that he one against make, TPS, right? Yeah, he started making points again last week yeah. or something. But like, uh, so it was like 120 days that he went without oh. points in total. So, <laughs> and I mean, there was obviously like uh, after his injury, there was also like the world juniors and then there was COVID cases in his team. So that could have also affected his game a little bit. But like, um, I think this was the thing that you as a, is a very like young team, like their average age is, just under 22. Oh my god. Yeah. Like you you think, oh well the New Jersey Devils are a very young team and it's like well their average age is 24. It's like Yup is very much younger. So I think that also kind of plays a part in his game that he's not that he has a little bit trouble because he's like he's surrounded by other youngsters who haven't played that many league games. So it's pro- possible that there's like um there's no one else to like pull him up type of thing right like everyone else is kind of going through the same struggles so like if they're all going through it there's not that one guy to be like just follow me out and then you guys can soar after that but he doesn't have that necessarily yeah no and the team obviously like they let go several of their uh uh older players last season one of whom actually is Jarko Imonen, who plays in Yugoret at the moment. So you know who he is and what kind of player he is. Mm-hmm. So um, and they kind of replaced them with a, a foreigners. I mean, they're not, they're a little older than 22, but, they're, <laughs> but they're, they haven't played Liga before. So that's also kind of the thing. So, but that's, that's the thing, right? Like they don't have a lot of of older players to help them kind of guide them through it. So if they're left to their own devices at like him at 17, uh, Samuel Hellenius, who's what, maybe 19 years old, depending on when his birthday is. And they're kind of like, you're leading the team. They're going like, well, we've never done this before. Okay. Um, And sure enough, they're at the bottom of the standings, but with, with Kemo, like you mentioned it earlier, he's got the shoulder injury, but it's like four injuries he's had over the year now, right? Like whether he was out long-term or not for each one of them, he was out a little bit for each and every one of those. And and that kind of adds up and that, that kind of not kills, but really kind of uh, limits the impact he can have on a season. Right. Yeah. And so that's why we see him not playing a whole lot of games, but you mentioned his, his shot. Is he like seen as, as a pure sniper, like Patrick line type thing? Obviously, huge size difference. Kemmel's 5'11", line is 6'4". Um, but yeah. is that kind of like the be has got an NHL caliber shot or is it just kind of like he scores a lot of goals? Well, to go my co-worker, Tero Lindemann from Jatko Aika, uh, he, actually said, he actually used the words that he uh, that Joachim Kemmel is Alex Ovechkin who needs to put out some muscle. Whoa, like, okay. That was, his, that, that, that was who he refer, referenced him to. Like he said that a that it was clear that Jörg Kemel does has watched like a lot of uh Ovechkin highlights and tries to mimic his game after him. So like when I said that he, he was like he was in the right place at the right, right time and everything, so he uses his shot. Right. In those moments, like he gets those goals because he's right in the, in the right place and everything. Okay. So kind of like Ovi, he's not going to be like one time clappers from the office all the time, but right place, right time, sniper mentality, right? Yeah. Like you say that in soccer, you got the number nine who's always at the right place, right time, the poachers mentality, if you will, always in the six yard box or the 18 yard box, I guess, just ready to pounce on anything and everything that falls in his path. And 
this is kind of what he does. It's not that he's going to throw bombs from everywhere because I don't imagine he's got a, a huge heavy shot. It's hard when he's only like 5'11". Um, yeah. But it's a guy who knows where to be and how to and, and where to go type of thing. Yeah. And well, I've seen some goals from him that he takes from a like a little further down from closer to the blue line so yeah. he does have a little like angry shot <laughs> as, like i've been told that as well <laughs> they that's call incredible it an angry shot an <laughs> angry sh i never heard a shot have characteristics <laughs> like that before <laughs> that's incredible you could say that about ryan pollock his shot is so angry it breaks the glass um <laughs> but with him I guess the big question is, is he like a game breaker, even at this level right now? Is he a guy when like Yip is kind of down and out and they've been kind of down and out a lot this year? Is he a guy they can say, go out there and do something and he'll probably do it? Or is it just kind of like he, he needs a little bit more help, at least right now? Well, I think in the beginning of the season, he was more of a, like, what I saw was that he was, like, so, sort of this, like, driving force for the team because there was, like, this one game where the team was down 4-1. Uh, and then uh, with two minutes left of the game, they managed to score one. Uh, so it was 4-2. And then the next two goals were um, Camille assisted the other one and scored the other one. And it was just like two minutes before <laughs> the regulation ended. So and they so they went on OT and then he scored the game winning goal. Unbelievable. Like, it was so, like I, I saw that game and I watched it like he's like he's really doing this. <laughs> it's like I think I'm pretty sure like like in my opinion, it was most of his he's doing in that moment that they managed to get to OT and win it. Right. So that's why we see him like kind of second overall or, or farewell in, in his draft rankings because at, at 17 years old and, and a recent 17, right? Like, cause he, he turns his birthdays in April, end of April, even. So um, you, you see that against men and you're going, yep, all right. There, there's something there. He, yeah. He did it once, but like you said, the beginning of the year, he's got a stretch of, I think at 18, 19 games where he puts up 16 points and you're like, holy hell. Okay. For a 17 year old, there's something there. I'll end it there because um, there's not a whole lot more outside of like we figured out exactly that Kemmel is what he did and what he's doing and what kind of to expect or, or, or see from his game. I don't think the Islanders are going to end up drafting him. It's the only reason I'm doing these. I, I did the top 15 draft or picks in the draft and the way the Islanders are playing in no way they're going to pick second overall, but I started something. So I'm going to yeah. finish it. So thank <laughs> you Tia for taking the time to speak with me and color coordinating our wardrobes. I, uh, I very much appreciate it. <laughs> no problem.